In this video, I'm gonna talk about different heart rate monitors, what I've used, and what I like uh, about certain ones. But before I start, I wanted to get a disclosure out of the way. I am partnered with Koros, and I do like to use the Koros heart rate monitor, so I will go through all of the differences and kind of what leads me to prefer this, uh, this one over the other ones that I've used in the past. Okay, so before I start, I think I wanna just kind of go over the a little bit about the technologies and how heart rate is measured. So generally there are uh, a handful of different ways that are actually measuring slightly different things within the actual process of the circulatory system within the body. So the heart uh, and, and the blood, blood flow within the body is essentially three different things that are happening. One is an electrical, electrical signal that tells the heart to pump. Uh, with, at, with that, the, the pump actually mechanically pumps and moves the blood. Uh, and then the third thing that happens uh, then is the blood flows through the vessels, through the outer extremities uh, and other parts of the body. So with that, there's different, different ways to measure each one of those aspects of the circulatory process. Uh, the first one is uh, an e ECG, so electrocardiogram. This is a measurement of the electrical uh, pulse or the electrical signal that is telling the heart to actually beat. The second thing that can be measured is the mechanical cardiac activity or the, the actual mechanical pumping action of the heart. This is typically done in a clinical set setting with uh, an ultrasound technology or echocardiogram. So that's kind of similar to an ultrasound that would be used to uh, get an image of a, of a, of a baby but it's actually of the heart uh, and it can actually see the heart pumping and measure the actual uh, mechanical motion of the heart. And then the third one is the circulatory activity. This would be an optical sensor, also called a PPG or photo sensor. Um, this is measuring the, uh, using light to measure the actual blood flow within the outer extremities of the body. So I, th I guess, I think to summarize, what would be used in the uh, sports or fitness industry is the e ECG type. So this is uh, our chest strap that actually measures the electrical impulses uh, that are generated to uh, signal the heart to beat. And then the optical sensor, whether it's on a watch or on an optical arm strap, would be using a photodiode to actually measure the blood flow within the system. So this is the signal to the heart, this is the actual blood that's flowing within the body. So slightly different things, but getting pretty similar results from a practical standpoint of what you are actually interested in uh, for measuring during physical activity. Uh, I have found in testing, so I was part of the testing process when Coros was developing the arm heart rate monitor. So I wore multiple different sensors, the watch, uh, multiple different brands of arm straps, as well as multiple different brands of chest straps, sometimes uh, several at the same time to compare uh, the readings, I think Coros officially states it's somewhere around 3% um, difference maximum that you would expect between uh, an arm arm strap type uh, like the Coros monitor and a chest strap. Again, from what I found, most of the time it is almost uh, identical and from a practical perspective, I would consider it equivalent. Um, really no, no difference in how I would analyze my data or, or review any of the information that I got from either one of the sensors. So I would consider really either type of sensor, whether it's optical or um, electrical based on electrical contact to be practically equivalent for my uses. So then uh, the next thing that really ends up being the next most important factor for me is after accuracy is how reliable is the sensor. And that's where there are some differences between how reliable the watch optical sensor is uh, the arm, arm straps optical sensor and then the, the chest strap with the electrical contact. So I think I'm going to start with the, um, the, the two different optical sensors. So again, this is a, an LED light source and then a photodiode on the back of this uh, optical heart, uh, heart rate monitor or arm strap. And then it is actually a very similar, almost identical, maybe it, I think maybe some of the hardware might be identical. Um, on the back of uh, a watch. So again, LEDs to emit light and then photodiodes to detect that light and turn that into a signal that can be um, measured in terms of beats, uh, beats per minute. 
Really where they differ is in the ability to accurately get a reading. So again, this is shining a light and the light reflecting back is then measured to understand um, how much blood is flowing uh, through the, the vessels at the uh, top layer of the skin and then convert that to BPM. With the watch, uh, the placement on the wrist is convenient for wearing a watch because it's easy to read and it's comfortable. It is not necessarily the best place to get a heart rate reading. Um, there's limited blood flow in that area. There's not a lot of tissue and it is a, you know, a very bony part uh, of the body near the wrist. So it makes it hard for the watch, uh, the back of the watch where the optical sensors are to sit flat against the skin. So that is a key to an optical sensor is that it has to sit tightly and flush against the skin. So all of the light that's being picked up is from the blood flow and not from your arm moving around or uh, your cadence as you run, which are typical issues that are seen with watch sensors. Generally, the way that people wear them, uh, myself included, to be the most comfortable is a little bit more loose than would be optimal for a heart rate sensor. So really to get a good reading, it has to be very tight, probably tight to the point where um, you're gonna see an indent in the skin. Most people aren't gonna find that the most comfortable. That's the reason that in the past, in, I'd say probably several years ago, um, or even you know well, well beyond that, it was always seen as the chest strap is the gold standard, that's the way to go if you want to use heart rate for physical activity. You, it was always assumed you just had to get a chest strap. And I think a lot of that had to do with just the challenges and getting a good reading from the wrist placement. What I find with the chest strap is that it is accurate when it is getting a good signal. And again, this relies on being able to read the electrical impulses. So it has a uh, essentially just uh, pads on the back that are able to make electrical contact with the body. One of the keys there is that you have to have um, conduction of an electrical signal. So if you don't have enough moisture, you will not get a good signal and then you will not get a good reading. So sometimes you have to get a little bit wet. You can use uh, electrode conductive gel. There's other solutions that are out there to try to improve the readings. Uh, but essentially what I found was on a lot of my runs at the beginning of the run, before I started to sweat a lot, I would get issues and errors with my readings. During the summer, it was occasional, but it was, I would say, frustrating when it did happen. Uh, and then the biggest issues for me were during the winter, I would see pretty much during the warm up or the beginning portions of almost every run when it was cold out and below freezing. I would just get bad readings on more than half of my runs. So that's where I really struggled with the chest strap. The chest strap is something I used a lot when I started running. Started running in the summer, got great results, had great uh, great data from, from the chest strap over time. Um, in certain situations, I found that it just wasn't as reliable. Uh, so even before Koros' product was out, I had switched completely to the arm strap method because I found um, with the testing and the use that I had, had put it in, into, it was much more reliable. So from previous testing I did, the accuracy from a practical standpoint is the same. And then I found that the reliability of getting a reading from the arm placement is spot on every time. I never have issues with a har arm heart rate monitor, uh, including the Koros. It always gives me a good result and it is not a challenge to deal with placement or tightness or how moist a chest strap is or if it's worn out. Um, to me, it's the most reliable and uh, accurate way to get good heart rate, um, heart rate readings. I think then maybe one of the other or a couple of other differences that I really like about the Koros heart rate monitor is that uh, it is what I find to be the most comfortable. So that really is uh, a differentiating factor with the arm heart rate. Uh, monitors is actually the physical form factor and how um, smoothly it sits on your skin, how flush it can sit, uh, and how, how much you can actually feel it when you're wearing it. There are other ones that I feel like have more, um, maybe not sharp edges, but less rounded edges, can be a little bit less comfortable um, in the band and just how the sensor actually sits on the body. This one with the, the oval shape and very rounded corners is very comfortable uh, and it's very easy to um, just get in place and get on is uh, in, and get started. It is extremely simple to use. That's another thing that I like. There are absolutely no buttons on it. It has wear detection. You simply just put it on uh, and it 
can detect that it's on the body and then it will automatically connect when I start up the watch. Really nothing to do other than just slide it on my arm before the run and then I just run as normal. Uh, and then it does have a rechargeable battery. So some other monitors, uh, a lot of chest straps, they have a uh, button type battery where it'll last days or months at a time and then it just dies and you, you have a, a run where it didn't work and then you have to go change the battery. Where the Coros is a rechargeable battery, it stated battery life is 38 hours of continuous usage, uh, but it is easily rechargeable. Uh, it has a magnetic charging cable, so I just slap it back on the charger. Uh, very convenient, very easy to use, and I haven't had any uh, challenges with it. So I guess to summarize, I find that the accuracy between a chest strap and an optical sensor is the same from a practical standpoint, so that I think that they're both uh, equivalent. The actual reliability of getting a good reading is a challenge with the watch sensor, depending on how you actually wear the watch. Some people are able to get better results than others um, if they wear it more tightly and higher up the wrist. Uh, but for myself uh, and a lot of others, it can be a challenge to get a extremely reliable connection and extremely reliable reading with the watch sensor. And then for uh, myself, I find that the chest strap in cold weather or other times when my skin is more dry, I will get uh, issues with, with readings and slightly uh, unreliable data. I also find that the chest strap is far less com comfortable than the armband, uh, and that's what leads me to preference uh, with the arm strap heart rate sensor. And I have been very happy with the, the Coros one, and it has multiple different band options, and it's super easy to use. So that is my uh, personal preference on how to measure heart rate, which I do feel is a valuable metric to have. I'll have a separate video on that in the future. Um, but I think that's my conclusion for this one. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and thank you for watching.